Modi'in, Israel. Uh, start us off. What's going on over there? Okay. The wow, the flood of information. Yeah. Is you know a, again, this is my area of, of of specialization. Stuff that I studied since I was a teenager. Wow. And even I have trouble kind of, you know, pushing my way through the sludge. A word of caution to all of our friends. Please, please don't believe everything that you hear. Yeah. I hear hostages are about to be released. Or a week ago, I hear Israel is in the midst of, 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 of fighting and, and the soldiers are asking you to drop everything. First of all, our soldiers do not take their cell phones into combat. They're not allowed. Yeah. So when someone tells you, I saw from a friend in it, and again, I'm going to say this, this very clearly, just because someone lives in Israel doesn't mean you should believe everything that she or he says. It's so true. Now, I live in Israel. Should you believe what I say? <laughs> Verify every single thing that I'm telling you. Yeah. Now, having said that, I have assured our listeners in the past repeatedly that I'm always on top of all the news, even though it isn't changing. I mean, it. you know, people say, so tell us what you're feeling. Okay, so right now it is almost three o'clock in Israel. I know that sadly we have likely lost soldiers today and it won't be announced until late this evening for the families to be notified. It's a very heavy feeling every single day. Oh, one thing people, please don't send me articles from Israeli sites. Yeah. I've seen them. Please, yeah. today, don't send me articles telling me that there's supposed to be a march in Washington, which, by the way, happened yesterday. Yeah. Okay? And I would love to know that some of our friends in America went to that march. Okay. First thing, right from the top, what do the Muslims call this war? You know, we've got, you know, swords of this and, you know, we've got all these cool names. I mean, someone in Israel makes money coming up with names for wars and operations. They do. They're, they're coming up with this stuff. One of the, what do the Arabs call it? The El-Aqsa flood. Hmm. It's all about El-Aqsa. Yeah. So this week I had the schut, the merit of being able to be up on the Harabai at the Temple Mount two times. Two times in three days. Wow. And it's fascinating because the Muslims realize this is this is all about El-Aqsa. This is all about control. This is all about the Temple Mount. This is all about whether there's a single Jew that's breathing every day in the land of Israel. This is not about land. This war is not about land. That one of the one of the Hamas leaders, one of the head terrorists, said the other day, "This is a perpetual thing. They're looking to do a a a seven ten. Sorry, that's going to sound weird to you guys, because you're thinking of it as ten seven. America remembers does the date backwards than than anyone else in the world. So let's just say October. October. They want to do this repeatedly." which is why we are fighting as hard as we can. It is only the American government and the European Union that speak of two states for two peoples. And, 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 and again, the, the American governmental uh, approach, they're freaking out to try to figure out what's going to be with Gaza once this war is over, because they still want to link it to Judea and Samaria mm -hmm. as one state. Now, mm -hmm. Someone basically read me the riot act on that yesterday and said, look at what Biden, this idiot is doing. 
And I said, you know, that's the page right from the Trump plan, the plan of the century, the deal of the century that, that create a link. And he's like, whoa. Okay, that's the other thing. The next thing, every once in a while, one of the ministers in our government or one of the members of Knesset will say something stupid. That's not unusual. That happens very regularly. A comment about like, well, we should think about nuking Gaza. So first of all, the European Union and the Muslims around the world are going crazy with that. We're not talking about an area that's on the other side of the world from Israel. You don't drop you don't drop a nuke in the in the in the next county over from where y'all are living. Okay. It's Especially when the law. prevailing winds is toward you. You know, it's it's just, I mean, it was one of those, you know, I could understand if he would have said something like, well, if only we could. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's stupid. The thing that's interesting in is, and everyone walks it back after they say it, but more than a few people, and surprisingly, in the left of center political parties, are talking about Gaza never being the same as it was. And they brought up the issue where hundreds of thousands, probably a total of about a million and a half, from what I last read of refugees from Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan were taken in all over the world. What about 1.5 or whatever million Gazans? So people are freaking out about that. But what is interesting is the topics that used to be really forbidden to talk about are coming up regularly now in Israel. Another thing I wanted to point out is there was a woman, I don't have her name in front of me, and my memory's not what it was, um, who they believed had been abducted to Gaza. Um, her remains were found. She was one of the leaders of this, like, you know, the, the, there were a number of communities near the Gaza border that were attacked that had these leaders in this peaceful coexistence thing. One of those elderly women um, who was released a few weeks ago, in fact, she and her husband every day would go to the uh, to the gate and meet Gazans and take their sick children to hospitals in Israel. Wow. You know, and everyone talks about, you know, with the, and, and, and uh, who is the latest idiot? Justin Trudeau. Oh, yeah. Right? Our friend Priscilla Reed is is smiling. Yeah. From ear to ear. Uh, the 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 killing of women and children in Gaza must stop. Well, yeah, you know what? I'm wearing this wristband, and we've got them all over the place in Israel now. A little higher. Up you know, oh, there, you go. Okay. Got it. Bring them home now. This oh. one's in English. Bring them home now. You know what? There are now 238, you'll notice the number goes down, hostages in Gaza. And I have to tell you two personal stories. Um, although when, when the profiles of each of our fallen soldiers come up, it's heartbreaking. I mean, they're all the, the, the best and brightest of, of our country. Last week, um, a young woman... Rose Lubin, may Hashem and our security forces avenge her blood. Um, border police officer, Magav Nikit. Now, the border police in Israel, those are the, the different green color uniforms and the dark green berets. That is considered a combat unit. <laughs> We're yeah. drafted into that. They, yeah. These are these men and women are hardcore. Uh, very. Rose Lubin made Aliyad 18 years old from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, these videos of her keep coming up on YouTube, of her singing. I mean, just a, an absolute doll. She came as a lone soldier. Her parents still live in Georgia. And she was murdered by a terrorist in Jerusalem. A few weeks before, she had fought at Kibbutz Sa'ad, 
her uh, kibbutz adopted family. When you have a lone soldier, they're adopted by an Israeli family. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, local place to go and, you know, do the laundry and spend Shabbat. So she fought. A few weeks later, she's back in Jerusalem and she's murdered. And a call went out to attend her funeral. Her parents and family, of course, flew in from Atlanta. And my daughter Ayala was one of the ones at the funeral. There were about mm -hmm. 15,000 people. And just the other day, um, a woman who was captured by Hamas and brought into Gaza and was filmed four days later was found dead. Well, the the Hamas took the video of her and said, "Oh, she was killed in a in a," and and according to the social media of the alleged Palestinians, they admitted that she had been, you know, beaten to death. 19 years old, Noah Marciano. Rose had been 20. Noah was 19 and the resident of Modi'in, our city. I mentioned on the Temple Mount yesterday, yesterday was Rosh Chodesh Kislev, and Mar Cheshvan that we just finished was a very, very, very difficult month for us. Kislev is the month of the ultimate darkness, the Syrian Greek rule over Israel, where the Torah was almost extinguished. Yeah. And the light of Hanukkah, of the Maccabees. We'll talk more about that over the next few weeks. Um, what is astounding to me is I've watched many of these videos where people pose as reporters or just people from YouTube channels, and they'll go to these pro-terrorist um, demonstrations, and they'll ask people questions. And seemingly educated people will come up with the same, well, the money that funded this, which was done by Israel, is the same money that funded the Holocaust. Yeah. Um, it is widespread belief on American college campuses that none of this actually happened. This is all generated through AI. I don't know how they 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 deal with the families that stand there and say, you know, all the, the pictures of their of their children. And and the fact that it is totally negated. Everyone is screaming, cease fire now, and accusing Israel of genocide. Yeah. Now it's Hamas that's doing the body count. I just posted something up on Facebook within the last hour that showed the march uh, in Washington yesterday on behalf of Israel. And it and it said that there were 20 million demonstrators as per the Gaza Ministry of Health because all the numbers are totally inflated. There are about 290,000 people there. But that's what happens. It's like, 500 people were killed. And then you see the same faces, mm -hmm. the same girl in the same pajamas, you know, or the one guy, one day he's a medic, the next day he's convulsing, the third day he's in a body bag, scratching his nose, looking at a cell phone. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I know. I was starting to get some of those videos. And it's, it's, it, if it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny. Uh, a guy is sitting there and he's watching, looking at his cell phone. He's, he's in a body bag. Um, this, uh, this movie that was put out and by the way, that, uh, you know, I, I posted some stuff about the, um, the, the, this, this uh, was all staged. And of course that video got banned on Facebook. Um, it's just amazing what these people are able to do in the in the midst of this i want to go back to something uh, before i forget it hold on um sure. i mentioned this on the on uh, life on purpose monday night and i i really encourage people uh my, it was just myself daniel and ryan monday night but we did a a a, a, a one hour podcast on um uh, why is this war different than all other wars why can't we just lump this in Ukraine and and what's going on in North Africa? And why can't we just lump it all together? No, this is a war different than others. Um, and the the whole the, one of the lies. This is off of a uh, a very obscure website called JoinToHashem.org. 
uh, <clears throat> I did a, a thing a number of years ago. I did this, the lie. Uh, this is under lies and biases. The lie, the Arabs need the money or the, the Arabs need the land. The truth is that there are Arab, 18 Arab countries with 5.25 million square miles, one state of Israel with 800 square miles. Uh, ratio is 640 to 1. To put this in other terms, it's like the Arabs owning 8.9 Alaskas and the Jews owning 0.65 New Jersey of New Jersey. So, I mean, the, the stupidity, as you said, the stupidity is overwhelming in all of this. It, it's no one is crying out, oh, my God, they took babies. No. You know, because they're saying, oh, well, you know, uh, rapes didn't happen. And you hear the Hamas spokespeople repeatedly saying, no, only soldiers were targeted. Yeah, right. And, Rarely do you have a a news anchor that will confront them. I mean, if that's the case, why do they have 238 people, men, women, and children, tie workers, bedwinds, yeah. you name it? Yeah, I, no I was cares. talking to uh, you know, I was talking to a, a mutual friend that uh, we've been to his restaurant together. Um, and uh, he actually has a Thai restaurant. He's from Vietnam. And I, I said to him, I said, you know, l listen to what happened to the Thai workers. And he was just like, wait a minute, I, I never heard of any of that. It's just absolutely not being reported out there because it's the agenda. It's, it's just flat. The agenda, um, the, the events of 80 years ago are being repeated the hitler youth i mean it's just it's the same playbook with uh and the only difference is is now it's computer generated instead of on a typewriter the joy that people have throughout the u.s ripping down the posters of the kidnapped people it's it's you know i saw a meme the other day that said something about you know, how it feels to have the world call for your extermination. And you see these like, you know, university educated Europeans walking around with signs that the world needs to dispose of the Jews, dispose of the Jews. And again, as many of our listeners have heard me say, I grew up in a neighborhood that was violently anti-Semitic. Yeah. But they wanted to beat me to death. I didn't. I never heard anyone say, we're going to go to your apartment and mutilate your father and rape your mother. No one ever said, you know, it was, it was, it, they wanted to kill me. Um, it's the world has gone insane. And what, what our listeners need to realize is this is, we said this, like, I think it was week one. We've got to be in this for the long haul. Yeah. You know, everyone was running around the first few weeks making sure all of our young soldiers had all the supplies they need. Well, the weather's getting cooler here. And, and we have all these people who have been displaced from their homes in the South and the North. They need winter clothing. Yeah, I mean, there's the, these communities will need to be rebuilt. By the way, speaking of rebuilt, construction is back in Israel, by the way. Meaning the construction workers are back. Not as many, but in Jerusalem, they never stopped. Hmm. And here in Modin, we have construction again. Wow, good. Uh, so we've got the Arab workers back. Meanwhile, Modi'in um, has gone from two to four, and now they're looking to expand to six rapid response teams. Wow. Um, you know, that will be sort of stationed in neighborhoods mm -hmm. so each of the major neighborhoods in modi'in will have its own rapid response team in addition mm. to all the other security um which again is a plug for the efforts of our friends from hayovel operation itai 
uh, for all the communities in Yosh, Yudan, Shamron, Judea, and Samaria, um, for you know the helmets and the vests and the the visors and all the things. Speaking about weapons, though, uh, the United States recently gave thousands of M16s to Israel. Great, thank you, America. With the stipulation that they not be used in any communities in Judea and Samaria. Yeah. So, you know, I just wanted to to, to throw that in. Um, let, let, let me toss in something with Operation Itai because yeah. uh, we continue to support that. Um, and we're, we're, we're not backing off on our support for everywhere I can find a good, uh, honest place. Um, I, I really encourage people, before you give to Israel, before you post anything on Facebook of a site for Israel, please check with, specifically with Hanok. You can send me an email. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm uh, under most circumstances, I'm going to check with, with you, Hanok. Uh, not everything that looks kosher on the internet is. And so no, if you're all. just, you know, it, it's emotional, it's like, oh, wow, I got to send, you know, like uh, our, uh, 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 how do I pronounce that? How do I, well, just, you know, Eckstein, um, the the whole thing with the uh international foundation for jews and christians um when you're standing there in front of probably a green screen with a bulletproof vest on yeah please don't give there uh, please also, go online you know check also, with Hanok. If yeah you, if you pull them up this particular organization you see that they've got over a million dollars in their war chest. So if they gave money to buy 500 or 1,000 vests, where are all those other hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars? Why is it sitting there? Yeah. So, so yeah, I yeah. really- Just be careful. I be careful with that. And um, I'm using, at the, at the moment, I'm using some back channels. Um, to uh to get funding to the right places um i had the incredible opportunity the other morning uh to be on the phone i can't give all the details of course but i i got to be on a call private call with an idf soldier in that is stationed in gaza and um somebody uh, something that we've been supporting and uh the soldier said please uh pass on my uh our thanks to uh those who have supported he said you strengthen us knowing that you stand with us you strengthen us and um so i i just again i i can't give details on this but uh yeah, i sense. know that the the you know just know that your funds that you're sending are going to the right place. And Absolutely. The, the other yeah. one is with our Operation Itai, uh, Tommy Waller of Hyavel, you know, Tommy's of course involved in, in a lot of things, but it's, it's the team that's, that is Hyavel. It's Josh and, and uh, Luke and Nate. And, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. If there was ever a group of people that I would trust with, as one person used to say, my life, my wife, and my wallet. Um, it would be this group that is gathered there. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. These guys have been there for 20 years, establishing relationships. And, well, and sure. why people just don't get involved with them you know, there's no reason to go out and do your own thing right now. These yes. are places, and this is, of course, where the inf infamous cowboys are at. <laughs> Boy, that that story has gotten that crazy? So much play throughout Israel. First of all, again, it was the unusual look. If if a couple of them weren't wearing cowboy hats in the airport, 
I'm not sure the story would have been picked up. Yeah. Um, but no, it is great. It is absolutely great. It's a wonderful thing. And, you know, that's another thing people were talking about. Well, you know, when, when Israel opens up, Israel's open. Israel is open. Some of the airlines that y'all from the U.S. would want to fly are not coming here not, yes. this time. This is also not the time to do a tour. No. But Israel is open. If anyone is thinking, though, of volunteering, please. And I see these messages, you know, pop up online of like, uh, you know, on, on like Secret Jerusalem. Someone will say, hi, just landed an hour ago. I've got no place to go. I came wanting to volunteer. Where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. Uh, it's a little too little too late, guys. Well, the first thing, you're a liability. People don't understand that. It's like when someone says, what do you mean I can't carry a gun in Israel? Well, if you don't know Hebrew, you're a liability. You know, if you don't know any Hebrew, you can't volunteer with medical. Uh, you, there's just things you can't do. And so, I mean, there... Kathy asked me the other day, the other morning, she says, did you book your flight? I said, no. Uh, I check the airlines most every morning to see what the, you know, what's going on. Uh, but right now, I feel like I would be a liability in the land. There's no reason for me to be there right now. There is a reason for me and for our groups. And by the way, commercial here. Uh, I have confirmed the dates with the hotels. We have everything set up. People can go to connect to Israel.org and they can send me a an email reserving your spot. There is no deposit required right now. All you have to do is send me an email and you'll go into a folder in my inbox. And as soon as we can confirm the uh our ability to go in as a group uh you'll get an email from me your deposits everything will will go forth through from there please do not please do i understand trusting hashem trusting god i i understand faith but please do not put your faith over onto my checkbook okay if a, if you don't have the money in your account that when we say oh, okay. okay we need the funds if that money is not there please don't put me in the middle of that okay we need people that have prepared and are ready to go the dates are the in we actually be flying out of the states on easter sunday how do we work that uh we're going to be in god willing we'll be there the first part of april so that you can give me a nice birthday present Thank you very much. And uh, also September. And so, you know, people can go and on their website is active right now. Wonderful. Fabulous. Fabulous. Uh, folks, be strong, be focused, have emunah faith. Um, we will get through this. We will get through this together. But this is where the rubber meets the road. We're either in or we're not. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about that. Hello. I don't know if you if if you've been tracking it in your mind. I know you got a lot uh, a lot just kind of going on. I, I do too. It's I, I find in the teachings that I'm doing, my mind wonders. Uh, I had the I had a oh yesterday trying to do living Torah, and I've got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've got Avraham, Isaac, Yaakov, and then uh, Rachel, and I, I, I think somewhere along the way, I probably confused everybody uh, before I finally caught myself, but uh, it's hard to, sometimes it's just hard to focus on things, but uh, at the same time, I've been kind of tracking where we would be, and uh, if it had not been for the 7th of October, 25 minutes ago, you and I would be standing with a group on the northern edge of Tel Don, where the golden calf was, and we would have been 
as a group reciting the Shema together. Yep. Well, May that day come again. Amen. Yeah. All right, buddy. Talk soon. Be safe. Take care. Shalom. Bye-bye.